while since I did my last favourites, but I just forgot, I guess. This week I'm going to be showing you another one of my favourites, and it's going to be a mixture of several things, art supplies, jewellery, um, clothes, things like that. Uh, first thing I wanted to mention is I cut my hair, and I'm pretty sure that this is the length I'm going to keep my hair because it was getting longer, but I'm just not a long hair girl anymore. I don't actually know why I ever grew my hair that long. I think it was something that I liked doing when I was little because I thought, you know, princesses have long hair and now I don't have the time to take care of this. So I've just cut it short. It's quite a lot shorter at the back, but I like keeping it slightly longer at the front so it can be kind of swept to the side because uh, me and fringes don't work because all that happens is if I cut a fringe, it just goes and just I have these tight little row of curls here that look ridiculous. So I keep this part a little bit longer and it's just lovely, it takes two minutes to wash, it's easy to maintain so I like it. Um, and before I hide it, I wanted to show you this and this is my first monthly favourite. Um, <laughs> bit of an odd one but I like hats like this, I like beanies, I like anything like this. Um, and it's a lovely colour, I love this kind of colour, a kind of really beautiful dark purple burgundy. And I got this from the men's section in Sainsbury's and it's just nice to just pop on the back of your head like that and it keeps your head comfortable and it's lovely so this is my first monthly favorites I normally have to get stuff from the men's section because um, I have a very big head and women's stuff just doesn't fit me because it normally tends to be about 52 centimeters which is about 10 centimeters too small for me so I have to get things from the men's section or I have to get them in places where they sell things for people with big heads so it's a bit annoying so when I see something that fits me in the men's section I'm like ah oh, I must have it so this was the first of my monthly favorites the second thing of my monthly favourites is, again, clothes. I've had a bit of a, a clothes session again. Uh, it's actually ponchos, and I'm going to zoom out so you can see a little bit better. It's two of them. Uh, it's these ponchos, and they're the lovely kind of ones that you wear like this. So, hang on. So they have a little gap here, and then you just wear them over. I don't know how well you can see that, but... Uh, yeah, I got two of these, and the reason I like them is you can wear them just like a poncho, so they're all big and bat wingish. But what I like to do is to fold them and turn them into scarves because when I actually have decent posture, I have quite a long neck, and most scarves don't cover my neck. They end up just kind of circling it like a tile, and, and apart from looking a bit ridiculous, they just don't keep my neck warm. So I like folding it in half like this, and then folding it again, and then possibly one more time if I'm really in the mood for something warm and then just putting it like that and then throwing it over and then it actually covers my whole neck and I'm not freezing so that's what I like to do with them because then they can kind of multitask as a shawl if I want to keep them as a shawl I just unroll it and then I can use it as a shawl and I used um, I think this one as a shawl for the music video for Lullaby um, which should be out now actually so if any of you want to listen to the EP that I was working on with Malumai I've got the link to that in the description box um, but I got two ponchos. I got this one, which I got from New Look, um, but technically I got it through ASOS. Actually, I, did. I don't know. I don't know if I got it through ASOS or if I popped on store, but um, it's probably sold now. So I don't know if you can still get this, but I got this one. And then I got this beautiful tartan print one from Matalan. And I love them both. They're fantastic. I can actually have a scarf which covers my whole neck, so that makes me very happy. So this is my second monthly favourite. The next monthly favourite was kind of a Christmas present to myself. I haven't been able to read a lot, which sucks because I love reading and I was just a voracious reader when I was little. I read everything in my local library. And I just, I was thinking I, I don't normally have time to read, which is really sad, but whenever I'm on a train, which is quite a lot, or travelling into London, um, there's at least 40 minutes where I'm just sitting around doing nothing and I try not to use my mobile because as Sara knows, I constantly have an almost dead mobile, so I try and use it as little as possible while I'm travelling unless I'm desperate or I'm lost, which is quite often. And um, so I got myself a Kindle and I got it in this beautiful little case. I mean, how cute is that? It's in a vintage little case. Um, and it was great. I spent Christmas week going through three Jeffrey Archer books. I read all of the Cinder series. Um, there's a huge list of books on here that I'm going to get through. Um, some of which I've started, some that haven't, and it's just nice because I get to sit down in the evening and I'm like, oh, I've got 15 minutes before I want to go to sleep. Just sit down, you have a read, and 15 minutes usually turns into about 40, but we'll ignore that fact. Um, and I love it, and I was so happy. It just, and it comes in a beautiful vintage case, which I was very happy with, so that's my third monthly favourite. The next monthly favourite is jewellery. Um, I mentioned a few favourites ago that I've kind of got into gold, which is very unusual because I hated gold for years. First thing I got are these tiny little kind of um, piratey hook earrings. 
which I really like. They're just small, they're cute, they're lovely. And the funny thing is, is I got my um, ears uh, pierced, a uh, second piercing, about a year ago. And the odd thing is, is that with this ear, I can put any kind of rubbishy earrings in, but with this one, it's not happy if I put kind of bad quality earrings in it, so they have to be gold or silver. And this one's gold plated, so I can wear it in my second piercing just fine and it won't react. Um, and with those, I got these. Um, I got some gold earrings, uh, not gold earrings, gold rings. Yeah, just simple little rings. I got them from ASOS, uh, not ASOS, I got these from Accessories, I got these from ASOS. Um, and they're just simple little gold rings. There's this lovely, um, what's the colour, mint green, uh, then a kind of rose pink, um, and they're just simple little rings, and I love them, they're so cute. And they're gold plated, so they don't turn my fingers green, which is always a plus. I'm trying not to get any cheapo jewellery that goes green, because I figure if it goes green, it's kind of a waste of money. So, yeah, I got these rings from Accessories. And then the next thing is actually paint brushes. And some of them are nail art brushes, actually, because... These paintbrushes I like to use either for painting or for pastels and you might have seen the video I did for CNAD um, where I was showing the technique that I use the pan pastels uh, for the skin and it's also the same technique that I used for Ragnar as well. I've done a post about that on my blog so you can see the whole um, process of it from when I started drawing her to when I finished. Um, and yes, Ragan is a character that will be in the second outsider book. I got these different um, art brushes. A few of them are nail art brushes. And nail art brushes are actually really good for art um, because there's no difference. It's a paintbrush. Um, the only difference really in some cases is the price. Nail art brushes tend to be cheaper, in which case just get the nail art brushes. And you can get shapes which can be quite difficult to get for art brushes. Um, and what I like about these ones is that they're quite long, so they're quite flexible. And you don't always want stiff brushes um, for art. And it's just it's lovely, absolutely beautiful for watercolour. I really like these for pan pastels because they're so light. They're still kind of firm enough for you to be able to apply enough pressure to really build up the pan pastels. But they're flexible enough to be quite forgiving. If you need to erase something, you can. And it's not just pan pastels, they're really good for just normal pencil drawings because they're very good for blending because they're quite soft but without being too soft. So there's these paintbrushes for nail art, which I use for art. And then there's these traditional painting brushes. Um, I got a few backups actually because I broke my previous ones or I've been using the previous ones for about five years so it was going to happen. But I got these which are the 00 from Windsor & Newton um, and they're just very, very fine paintbrushes and they're perfect for very small detailing. And then these I like, um, well, they're a good just overall set of paintbrushes. They're the 22 from Daler & Rowney. They're both from the same company, but for some reason they've just got different patterns. I think one set I got, one of them I got from WH Smith, and the other one I got from, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Hobbycraft, but you can also get these on Amazon. I'll try and find links for everything that I mentioned down in the description box, unless they're sold out or um, out of stock or something like that. But yeah, these are my favourite kind of paintbrushes and restocked paintbrushes of the month. Uh, next thing is kind of backup um, kind of stuff that I already use for when I was writing uh, or when I am writing Outsider what I do is I have a book like this uh, and what I do is I have notes of everything things that I've changed things that I want to improve I've almost finished um, this book kind of while I'm going through I'll mention improvements I've got this which is a massive um, plot layout of the entire uh, I don't know if you say quadrology, um, but series of four books, because Outsider is going to be a series of four. Um, I knew how it was going to end when I started the book, but then um, a few months ago I sat down and planned out the plot line of every single character, what was going to happen, how their decisions affect other characters and kind of change the landscape of the, the story. Um, but yeah, for any stories that I write, I like books like this. Sometimes I type on computer for um, kind of character backgrounds. I like to do character backgrounds because if I understand their history, then you kind of can understand how they're going to behave. I don't like just randomly making a character do something. If you have to make a character do something, that's not really a character, that's a puppet. And I want people to be able to read about these characters and think, yeah, you know, that's something that that character would do, um, and to try and get into those characters' heads. So normally what I do is when I start any kind of book or if I create a new character, I write, I write down their name, I write down where they came from, their family, their history, um, and then once I've done that, I write kind of plot points and stuff like that. And I've already gone through two books 
of this um, for the second Outsider series. So I realised that these were just far too small. And yeah, and I've been starting to get books which are this size. And this is for a book that I might start writing after Outsider. Um, because sometimes when you're writing something you get a bit bored and you're like, oh, I don't want to be dealing with Astrid's problems today. And sometimes you just need a little bit of a break from the book that you're writing currently to kind of come back at it again within a few days and look at it with a fresh set of eyes. Um, so one of the things I like to do is just write down random story ideas and sometimes I might not use it. I mean, some of these I might spend ages working on, but I might not ever use them. But it's okay because it kind of stretches your imagination, it kind of improves your writing, improves your character development, so it's really not a waste of time. But I like these kind of books because they, they've got quite a thick cover and then they also have um, a bookmark strip, which are really good, so, you know, if you're writing through it, and you want to know where you are, it's just very easy, you can just pull it out. Um, one thing that I like doing actually is putting little lines at the end of each page when I've finished writing so that, that way I know how far I've gotten through the book and I know if I need to get back up. And what I also like is that they have a really thick front page so if I want to do a beautiful decoration, I like decorating the front of the book because it gets me excited, it gets me happy, I start to imagine how this world that I'm creating is going to look visually so that's quite fun. Um, and yeah. This is one book that I might start writing. There's so many little books that I want to write after Outsider. This one will probably only be a one book. Uh, it won't be a series. Uh, I'm really, yeah, I think after I finished Outsider I need to take a break from series. Because they're great, but every so often you're like, look, I just need one book. Um, but yeah, it's these books. And I have backups actually, um, because I hate running out. When I'm on a roll and I want to write and I want to write about the characters, I don't want to have to walk down to Sainsbury's and take 40 minutes to walk there. I just want a book right now. Um, so I got backups. Um, this one, actually, where did I get these? Oh yeah, I got these both from Sainsbury's. Actually, there's this lovely botanical one, um, and they're all exactly the same. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Another reason that I like these kind of books is because they have this at the very back, which is a little folder like that, and it's really good because I like to do little drawings of all the characters. There's these which I've done for the Rag Queen. I don't know how well you can see those. Um, I like drawing the characters that I do because it helps me visualise them better. Um, so yeah, these are characters which I might be doing at some point once I've finished Outsider. There's any kind of drawings or little notes which either haven't gone in here, I like to just pop into these folders at the back and it's good because it means if you pop them between the pages there's always that risk that they might fall out but if you pop them in the little um, slot at the back they're not going to fall out. So that's why I really like these kind of books for writing down notes and story plot points and all that. Um, so that's uh, my last favourite for this month. Oh no, actually, that's a lie. That's not my last favourite. Uh, my last favourite is this. I absolutely love these. It's an earthbound portfolio. There's tons of different things that you can use to um, store your art supplies, but I really like these because they're book-like. Um, and I like sketchbooks, but they can drive me a bit mad, and I'm, I'm sure anyone who does drawings has this exact same reaction. When you start a sketchbook and you're so happy because you've done loads of beautiful drawings but then inevitably you mess up at some point and it annoys you that there's that one drawing that you really hate and you think, oh I could have done the blending better or you know the composition could have been better or um, I don't know, their figure is slightly unrealistic or something like that. But what I like about these is I can just rip out my favourite drawings or do them on a loose piece of paper and then store them all in something like this. Or what I've done is I have a folder which is just for all the artwork that I've done for Outsider. So I have drawings of Ragnar, Knud, um, Astrid, I still need to do drawings of Jal and Raggy and Halvard and all the other characters. I will get there but it's just trying to find time uh, to do them properly. Um, I have a folder like this just for all the artwork that I've done for Outsider. I have a folder just for old artwork. Uh, that's my last favourite of the month. I will try and include links for everything that I use down in the description box. I hope you found some of these interesting and I'll have a new video for you next week. Here,